exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Since the 1940s, when we first started doing nuclear testing, UFOs all of a sudden appeared and were very interested in the types of energy discharges that were taking place. July 8th, 1947. Almost two years to the day after the Trinity test, and only about 150 miles from the test site, one of the biggest and most widely known UFO events was about to unfold. Why did the aliens go to Roswell? You look at what the Roswell Army Air Force Base was. B-29 bombers that dropped nuclear weapons over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was the home base, the first nuclear weapons base. Could the heat which emanated from the detonation have given alien nations a telltale sign of advanced human activity on Earth? These aliens didn't come looking for us. We ultimately called out to them by detonating these nuclear weapons. So ultimately, whatever happens to us is kind of our own fault. The connection between our use of atomic weapons and first contact would not be made until the mysterious Blue Planet Project book surfaced more than 30 years later. The book reveals the truth behind secret experimentation, abductions, and the rise of underground alien cities that had already been carried out, and all of this without the public's knowledge. The Blue Planet Project is a compilation of notes from somebody who had seen some inner workings of the alien and government infrastructure. It literally is the holy grail, the Bible of UFO conspiracy. Some UFO theorists believe it was written by scientist Jefferson Sousa. Sousa was said to be involved in highly covert, top-secret projects. It is believed that his government clearance allowed him access to all military secrets. He put everything into this document, detailing over 160 species of aliens that were visiting Earth, detailing why they were mutilating cattle, explaining why they were abducting humans. But Sousa himself has never been found. No one's been able to really talk to, find, or verify that Jefferson Sousa even existed. Whether or not he worked for the government or military, there's been no evidence that's ever surfaced. We hear stories of people who chose to be a whistleblower and come out of some classified project and raise their hand and say, yes, I was working on a UFO, and then they disappear. You can't talk about it, because if you do, you will die. And that's the whole premise of what one scientist says about the Blue Planet Project. He's a rogue scientist right from this committee. No one can deny that the stories have a terrifying message. And if proven true, will change the course of mankind's future forever. But as we delve deeper into the document, we uncover a more sinister plot. The Blue Planet Project exposes a supposed government cover-up of epic proportions. An underground base where the unthinkable is carried out. And a shadow government that will do anything to silence those who know the truth. Do we finally have an answer to the alien question? Are we alone or are aliens secretly walking among us? 30 years after incidents at Roswell, a mysterious book surfaces, revealing secrets that shock its believers to the very core. A UFO crashed in Roswell in 1947. We recovered technology, we recovered alien bodies, we recovered a live alien, a living extraterrestrial entity. What do we do with this? Faced with the alien question and the aftermath of World War II, President Truman signed the National Security Act effectively shielding the public from the truth. This embargo still exists today. Unsealed case file, the shadow government. The U.S. government has no evidence that any life exists outside our planet or that an extraterrestrial presence has contacted or engaged any member of the human race. In addition, there is no credible information to suggest that any evidence is being hidden from the public's eye. We would embargo the truth about the existence of aliens, our knowledge of them, our working with them, our reverse engineering um, alien technology. None of that we would talk about. We would deny, deny, deny. According to the Blue Planet Project, the U.S. government set out on a journey to create the biggest cover-up in history while attempting to discover what could be gained from the technology and weaponry of these strange new beings. But it was a job they couldn't do alone. 
The Blue Planet Project actually explains that there are a collection of secret societies who've also been looking into this alien topic and potentially masterminding the whole interaction of aliens visiting Earth. For the first time in history, the Blue Planet Project puts a name to these secret agencies. Project Red Light, the covert military subgroup created to test and fly recovered UFOs. Blue Team, a group that handled the recovery of downed or crashed alien life forms. And Project Delta, a security team and task force, more commonly known as the Men in Black. But no group is more notorious than the one behind all the others, the infamous Magic Group, also known as MJ-12. I think the closest to a secret society that's keeping the lid on the UFO cover-up would be the Majestic 12 organization. The MJ-12 was basically formed out of the NSO, National Security Organization, as a means to deal with this interaction with extraterrestrials or uh, interdimensionals that were interacting with us. Their response was to come up with a commission of people to interact with these things and make all the decisions. All the decisions of what happened between alien and human interaction left to 12 people. If that's true, that's scary. According to the author of The Blue Planet Project, MJ-12 is comprised of scientists, military leaders, and government officials, including luminaries such as former U.S. Defense Secretary James Forrestal. If the document is proven true, this group was able to hide the alien reality from the public and lay the groundwork for a hidden agenda that continues to this day. To keep the truth secrets, MJ-12 has been implicated by UFO theorists in everything from covering up Roswell to countless alleged murders, disappearances, and so-called accidents of those considered a threat to national security, even if those threats were their own members. Leading UFO specialists point to former Secretary of Defense, James Forrestal. Reports state President Truman himself asked Forrestal to step down when he openly objected to the secrecy about the alien problem. On the morning of May 22, 1949, James Forrestal was found dead after plunging mysteriously from the 16th floor of his hospital room. The official report declared only that he had died from a fall. To this day, the government has categorically denied the existence of MJ-12, but recently, Two documents have surfaced claiming that MJ-12 and their hidden agenda is very real. We actually found the evidence that these secret groups do exist and that they are operational and they're doing exactly the job they're designed to do. Keep the UFO secret while investigating UFO technology. I don't need to believe it. The evidence is there. It is evidence sustainable in a court of law. But the most disturbing piece of information hidden within the document points to an unimaginable possibility. In the 40s, there were reports where actual coordinated landings of extraterrestrials took place with our U.S. Air Force. And certain treaties were actually formed with various alien races, where they agreed to give us access to technology. And the reason I really do believe that we have some sort of interaction with these species is during the time of those experiments, our industry skyrocketed, starting in like the, you know, 1940s, 5, 1947. A lot of people will say, yeah, it's because of the war. But we're talking about technologies that hadn't existed before. How did that happen? We have access to these extraterrestrials to help us with our technology, but what are we giving them? Next. We find out what our government allegedly traded for the secrets to advanced alien technology. What was that agreement? Whose base really is this? And finally get a glimpse of who or what is behind it all. Large bulbous eyes, bald head, they are beings that come and take you in the night. Are there aliens among us? If so, where did they come from and what do they want? More than two decades ago, a frightening document began circulating within the UFO community, outlining extraterrestrials living covertly on our planet. The book is known as The Blue Planet Project. The document describes more than 150 species of aliens that have visited or are visiting our planet at this time. More chilling is how the document describes the alien races in great detail. Almost as if the author had been on the inside. 
The Blue Planet Project talks about over 150 species of aliens visiting Earth. They start with the greys, the Nordics, and even the reptoids. Just like here on Earth, we have different species and also different races in humanity. And we know that many different people who have been abducted describe variations of what we call the grey. These spindly limbs, small beings, usually three to four feet in height, large bulbous heads, black almond-shaped eyes, and it seems very interesting that they all seem to look alike. What happens next depends on the story you listen to, whether or not it be a violent experiment or maybe just a kind of a ride around the planet in a spaceship. Those are the ones that you hear about the most. Other malevolent species described in the book include the underwater-dwelling Regelians and Reptoids. The Blue Planet Project describes these beings as perilous creatures, some requiring human blood and fluids to survive. According to the Blue Planet Project, not all species of aliens want human annihilation. There are the Nordics, a tall human-like race who are reportedly peaceful and want only human salvation, and yet, the variety of species described in the book begs the question of how so many extraterrestrials could exist in and around Earth without our knowledge. The Blue Planet Project book tells us not only what it is these strange creatures are hiding, but where. Unsealed case file, the Dulce base. In or near Dulce, New Mexico, uh, there are reports of a vast underground facility, a secret base with a number of levels that are very, very secret. If the theorists are right, buried underneath the Hickoria Apache Indian Reservation is a hidden city built for extraterrestrials to operate unnoticed by the public, but side by side with our very own government. I've been there. When I was out there, I got to spend time with the Hickoria Apache Nation, and all of them had very strange stories to tell. Unexplained lights and unexplained UFOs in the, in the sky. Uh, people who have seen weird uh, creatures running around the forest at night. You have to know that something is going on there. Seven levels deep and filled with over 18,000 alien beings, this base is reportedly filled with experiments that range from advanced weaponry to the creation of lizard-human hybrids. The deeper you go, pretty much the more secretive it goes. And in some of these levels, the research is more geared towards the extraterrestrials' needs rather than the human needs. And we hear projects and things taking place that really are quite disturbing. Potentially a vat of human body parts where these extraterrestrials soak to ingest nutrients through their skin. In levels where there are in vitro fertilization or test tube versions of extraterrestrials literally being grown. Are these things actually possibly taking place on a base here on Earth? According to the Blue Planet Project, this pact between the U.S. military and the alien races allows for human mind control experiments, alien housing, genetic testing, and cold storage of humanoids. What it would come down to is it depends on what the actual pact was between our military and this race of extraterrestrials. What was that agreement? Whose base really is this? Did we have a choice in the pact, or were we forced to do it? There's no set story on exactly how this transpired. The only part of the conspiracy that's really out there is that it transpired. We agreed to let them abduct a certain percentage of our population for medical research, for experiments that they were interested in. Now what happened was that they broke that treaty and started to abduct many more people than we had originally agreed to. Tales of experimentation recount stories of pain, torture, and never-ending fear. These are human abductees we're talking about. And if the Blue Planet Project is right, then this could be anyone, including my family, your family, no one's safe. But what was the purpose of this experimentation? The Blue Planet Project book provides an unsettling answer. As the author of the Blue Planet Project tells us, there are various reasons for these abductions, but the most important one does seem to be reproduction. We have aliens abducting us and doing all these experiments, including interbreeding with humans. Why would they do that? Why breed a human and an alien together? And the only answer that I can come up with, and that seems very evident in this book, is they're trying to keep their species alive. They're trying to reproduce. But the real concern may be, what will be done with the human race once they find what they need from us? When we come back, if the Blue Planet Project recounts the truth, 
then what does that mean for the human race? Does the secret alien agenda for mankind involve cooperation or extinction? And what is the government planning that every human on Earth needs to prepare for?